What is up, good peoples? Welcome to the Gamers at Large and another episode of Let's Talk. Tonight, I got with me Andre. What's up, people? All right, and what we this is going to be the last Let's Talk of the year. Um, the new year is fast approaching, so we fi- we decided to get this last one in before 2017 hits. And what we're going to be talking about is Project Cross Zone, the series on the 3DS. Um, if you don't know much about it, it's basically... Sega, Capcom, and Namco Bandai, and okay, can, can 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 we just say the story don't make no damn sense? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll I'll kind of give a brief history. It started off as away. Namco. <laughs> it, it started off as Namco Cross Capcom, which was on the PS2 exclusively in Japan. All that well over there. Unfortunately, so they were worried about localizing it. It never got localized. There is a fan translation out there. If anybody ever wants to look it up and go ahead and play it on an emulator or whatever, I condone it because this is not something you're likely to get, even though they should remaster it and put it back out, possibly on the Nintendo Switch. But hey, I'm going to just point that out. Um, But it's it's basically like their, their worlds are just like being melded together by like this group who's trying to create a whole lot of chaos and each game the chaos gets bigger and more elaborate so (laughs) it it, it really we say it doesn't make sense it actually makes sense that it doesn't make sense kids showing up on me at the last second um (laughs) First game was Namco and Capcom. Second game, which is Project Cross Zone, was Namco, Capcom, Sega. Project Cross Zone 2 is Namco, Capcom, Sega, and now Nintendo. So, and and my has been a developer for this series exclusively. They've been the ones developing the series even back when they were with Namco Bandai. They switched to Nintendo. So they have always made this this series, which is great. And I would I just want to see more of it, but it is it's awesome. And if anybody who liked Deadpool, the movie Deadpool, at the very least, I can see you liking Project Cross Zone Two on the 3DS. So like oh, putting would, that out there, you would love if you are a fan of fourth wall breaking, you will love this game, uh, um, especially with one. Fox Demon Girl, who's in the game. I'm I'm not going to name her right this moment, but yeah, she <laughs> off the chain. I'll just leave it at that. She's just she, off the chain. She's like 700 some odd years old too, <laughs> and look not a day over 15. But <laughs> <laughs> I played the first one all the way through. I enjoyed the heck out of the game. It was a lot of fun. It's one of those games where like the the series in and of itself is hilarious because of all the you know, um, fourth wall breaking jokes, the the jokes ragging on each other's games. Yes, they rag on each other's games. Right, they rag on each other's games. They rag on games that you probably wouldn't notice that they ragging on if you don't think about it. Yep. And they're real slick. And uh in Project Cross Zone 2, they rag on the United States. They rag that, on the, they rag on each ooh gosh, man. Yeah, they got us. That, that one that that one that one stereotypical girl who don't know how to speak the language, <laughs> yeah, or broken Japanese, <laughs> and they pretty much and they translated uh, it into broken English, which made it so much funnier because you know she's supposed to be speaking Japanese. <laughs> yeah, th- th- it's hilarious how they do it, but it's kind of true how they set it up. Um, <laughs> But I think one of the greatest strengths of the series in and of itself is the fact that it is a very, it's a very um, comedic uh, series in the style of like something like a Deadpool where there is a lot of like sexual innuendos that is going to fly over your head at first. Listen, listen, this is, this is where when people talk about censorship, I would, I would love them to, to take, take this example. Project Cross Zone in Japan is cleaner than the American release. 
cleaner than a North American release, and that's intentional. Yeah, I, I heard, I read about that. Uh, I actually want to play the Japanese version, but I just to see what. The, but the what Japanese see. version is the clean one. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's why I want to play it because I want to see what <laughs> what exactly you know did they change because a lot of stuff in it is very Japanese anime centric. Some of the jokes, so you know you still get that that sort of humor, but yeah, from what I've read, it, the the Japanese version is the cleaner version, which is which is weird because they usually get the dirtier version of a game and we get the the toned down. Nice, clean, and pressed version, and it is like, now nah, we gonna get you the sloppy one. <laughs> yeah, in this in this particular instance, yeah, um, and that's that's across both games. Um, and like it, it, I, said, I, I've, I was I'm finally able to get part two because um, mm -hmm. of reasons. And bruh, it gets so much worse than the second one. <laughs> yeah, I, the first first one gives you some hints, but the second one just lays it all out for you. It's yeah, like, the first one is more is much more subtle. But the second one, they just said the hell was subtly. Like, and, and I'm happy they did. I'm so happy they did. Yeah. And, and the hell was subtly. Uh, th this is rated T for team, but we don't really care. It should be rated NC seventeen in some point. Well, way. it's 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 all innuendo and playing with the the jokes the right way, and they do it so well. Yeah, they do it very well. They do a, a very good job of doing that. Um, but one of the things that I, I actually wanted to talk about because. You know, playing the game is it's as fun as it is. I would like to, and this I know this is wishful thinking for those of you who have played Project Cross on this is very much wishful thinking. But here's this is why I asked Andre to join join me on this one because he actually is good at thinking about how to create games to come to a certain specific system. So just how they would work on a certain platform, a certain platform type. Yeah. So I was thinking home console, can it actually work? I think it can. It can. And and again, Namco Cross Capcom, the, the very beginning of the series, started out on a home console. So it's not like it would be unfamiliar territory. The only problem would be really to, to advertise the game the right way to get people interested in it. And to me, I think we get Ryan Reynolds on board as part of the advertising team and, and go full on Deadpool with <laughs> it, it's worth it. it. It would definitely be worth it. Yeah, th and, that would and, be cool. And you could say, and I know this is an overused dead meme, but you could say it's a greater love story than Twilight and it still would be true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I'll agree with you on that one. <laughs> Just because at the part I'm at in the game. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. See, see, Jay does not know the game the same way I know it because I've actually I've already finished it and I know all the dirty little secrets. And he's discovering the dirty little secrets. Yeah. Yeah. People, it gets hilariously awesome. But <laughs> what here's the thing, because like when you put it on like a home console, you know, you have to because one 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 of my little gripes with the game is that there's a lot of uh to get the jokes there's a lot of setup time for them. And yes, there is. Yeah, so you spend a lot of time in the actual jokes in the story and not like fighting. And I actually like the combat the way the combat set up. Oh, oh, that's one. As great as the game is, the combat is just as good as the hilarity in the game. Yeah, it's a it's one of those situations where like. It's flashy and over the top, but it works. It, it, it's a feast for the eyes, in my opinion, because you, you're seeing a lot of stuff happening, and they're having a lot of fun with it. Now, my thing is, would you have to, if to bring it to like a home console, would you have to like uh, increase the combat side of things, or um, would, you, would you have to change it in any way? Would you change it to like a more of an action RPG type instead of like a quasi turn base no I, I would i would keep the combat the same i would keep all of it the same the only thing i would do would probably be to make higher res versions of all of the uh, sprites and stuff and probably change the font a little bit because on the hd screen the font's gonna look a little funny when you try to read it and yeah. it might wash out some 
So I would change the way the font looks and probably embolden the outline of it so that everybody can actually read it. <laughs> but, so you would probably do something like uh, like what they did with that Shantae Half Genie Hero. Yep. I would keep the game exactly the fucking same. Just make a few minor visual improvements mm-hmm. and maybe even though it doesn't actually need it, but it would it would look smoother. So I would do that, but that's about it. The game could be exactly the same. It does not need to change in any way other than that. Other than that, true. True, because the game does have voice acting in it. It's just all Japanese. Which is fine with me, because the way they exaggerate some things, I'm just like... Yeah, you, need, you need it to be in Japanese. You don't need it to be in... No, same thing, in English, like, the voice writer. actors... Like, you need it, to be... Yeah, in, in, yeah, in English, the voice acting would not work. No, Especially... Either. And, and I, I got to spoil this moment because it's like one of the funniest moments in the game. And and this when uh when your boy Sagata Sanshiro shows up and he sees Sakura from Sakura Wars. And he gets a smile on his face, a big grin, like he's super happy. And he goes from the super deep, strong, masculine voice to, hi, Sakura. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and then they start dancing, and, and it's just like, what am I looking at? <laughs> it was like, I got so caught off guard by that moment. And I was, I didn't, ex- and, but like, the bad thing is I had seen the commercials. I did not expect that at all. I, I didn't, I expected him to, you know, have a, a change in tone, maybe. I did not expect him to go over the top like they did. Oh, and yeah. Just, well, it's, and, and this is, and it's not like there wasn't a precursor for it to go over the top. But I'm like, th- this is Sagata. They're not going to make him like go that go that route. They did. They made him go that route. Oh. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> when you see like Sagata says Shiro, when you see them commercials, this dude is like beating the hell out of people for not playing Sega. <laughs> he and he and he brings that up a whole hell of a lot during this game. <laughs> he, oh gosh, man. The dialogue and, and another great thing is that the, the individual characters have dialogues with the teams. They have special dialogues for like for introductions as well as for um off opponents. And uh, oh gosh, man. Mm. The dialogue that he has for everybody is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, well, he is the the the, the superhero of Japan. <laughs> Like every every Sega character and like most of the uh, the characters that are some sort of police force know who he is. <laughs> like they all know who the hell he is. I'm like, wow. It, it actually makes a whole lot of sense. This man transcends time, space, dimensions, and companies. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of makes sense, the, especially if you see any of those Sega Saturn commercials. Mm. That makes a whole lot of sense because like. Go on YouTube, people, if you can, and just type in Sagata Says Hero uh, Sega Saturn commercial, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He beats the hell out of people for not. Wait, look, this, this, is, this is a person who walked into a nightclub and laid out the whole nightclub <laughs> <laughs> for not playing Sega Saturn. Yeah, he like he laid them all out. <laughs> it's funny, but it's kind of vicious. <laughs> and his um. His bet, his uh, assist move is literally paying homage to all of his commercials where he beats you up and he has multiple versions of himself show up, and then he does that throw where you uh, hit the ground and blow up. Yeah, <laughs> like, gosh, so, oh, like, that's just so brutal. <laughs> I mean, I mean, hell, they did a death battle between him and freaking Chuck Norris. So I think he should have won, though. I'm, I'm as much as I like Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris got beat by Bruce Lee, so badly. If, if, if Bruce <laughs> Lee beats Chuck Norris, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I think Sagata got Bruce beat because he's <laughs> like in basically infinitely durable. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just me. That's just my thinking. But <laughs> I mean, hey, dude, he is Sagata. So I mean, he's like the only. He's like the the, the only mascot. I was surprised he never got his own game. That's the weird thing, and I'm like, where is his? Like at this point, for he needs to have his own adventure, like yeah. his own official adventure game, and it'd be like, just do it, just just get it done, put put it out there, and let people laugh. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, I, and, I mean, I understand. Like he's like one of the the characters that everybody was was happy to see made it into Project Crosso. But I was like, I've always wondered why Sega never made a game based around him. I guess they they would probably be too serious. But you can't do a character it, like that and have it be serious. He, no, it be it, like you got you know about like how those uh those movies are where they have like the superhuman martial artist, but he does ridiculous things. That's that's what he is. <laughs> Basically, yeah. In just a nutshell, times twenty. <laughs> In a nutshell, he's just unbelievable. Literally. That's that's his whole premise. He's supposed to be unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> like you really don't believe in him, but yeah. <laughs> like, how is this possible? But yeah, the the cast. Oh. The cast of characters in the games are actually like is is it's not a small cast. It's actually a large cast. But and some of the characters do come back from the first game, which if if I were to actually put it on the console, I'd probably put every character that's been on both games on there. Oh, I would definitely do that too, especially for like a sequel. Yeah. I put the whole cast in I know it'll be like 85 characters or whatever, but they could do it. <laughs> At, at this point, I really believe they could pull that off. Um, because oh, man, I got and, and and I have to do my I have to finish. I've been making a wish list for Project Cross Zone 3, and I gotta <laughs> finish that because I have a fifth company I want to drag into this because there are certain characters I can see interacting really funny with each other. Is it Square Enix and Sephiroth? No, okay, that would be for, for, for number four if that comes around, but um, no, I was thinking SNK. Ah, for, for reasons. <laughs> oh, I, I, I kind, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, think of SNK. Okay, I, I'll divulge a few, few of my uh, thoughts. I was thinking SNK because I want to see Terry Bogard show up, but I wouldn't pair him. I would pair him with Blue Mary from both of them from Favorite Fury, and then I would put Guy in the game and put him with Andy Bogard, Terry's younger brother. Okay. Had both the ninjas together, um, <clears throat> and then I would put Axel with uh, I bring Cody into the game. Put Axel with him because they're so similar, but yet very different. Okay, I think people could get behind that one. Uh, I have a I have a whole list, so that video is going to be be long when I do it. <laughs> I, I've got a really long list, but I had a really unique idea. Is kicking himself because he went he he uh vetoed putting Bayonetta in Project Cross Zone Two. Wow. So because he he's he wasn't ready for her and Dante to meet each other, quote unquote. But he he <laughs> said he said on Twitter he was kind of regretting that decision. Hold that on, he should have to do with it. that rumor that Bayonetta Three is going to have a special have Dante as a special guest character. I don't know. I have no idea. But he said he regretted the decision because he looked at how Project Cross Zone 2 turned out, and he's like, I wish I could have would have let them put her in there. So, and I was thinking, we could have a unique little team set up with Dante and Sylvia, and then have Bayonetta as the third, and allow you to be able to swap out Sylvia and, and Bayonetta between, for having them as... The team where it'd be Dante and Bayonetta, and then Sylvia is the third. Oh, that could work. <laughs> so, so that either way, you could have Bayonetta be able to be a, a solo with everybody, or you could have Sylvia, everybody, and then you can have the the pairing of Dante and Sylvia, or Dante and Bayonetta. You to choose who you want to swap in and out, and they get different moves depending on who you got them paired with. Like yeah. just just a, just with him as a test. Like, but you you can see how Bayonetta would, Bayonetta would fit. I'm I'm just saying what she would be doing to everybody. Yeah, how she'd be messing with them. Yeah, because she already does that in her own game. So it, it like this is, just think of this: put Bayonetta with Reiji and Zhao Mu's team. Oh God! <laughs> and, and she and, and you already know how Zhao Mu is. Reiji wouldn't stand a chance. He he would be. Um, yeah. <laughs> He, he, he would be messed up. He, he would seriously be messed up. But he would be, he'd be screwed up in the head because he's just like, what, what am I supposed to say? Yeah, because I mean, and when you play like something like Bayonetta, and then you play something like Project Cross on, you see how she fits. 
<laughs> Trust me, you see how she fits. I mean, she's actually perfect for the game. Yeah, she really she definitely is. So, Blake, but that that was that's just a, a little bit of the divulging of still not done character list and all that. But I'm not done like fleshing out the idea. So, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So that's, that's why that video is going to be a minute. Yeah, that, that's probably gonna be a that's that's probably gonna have to be like a two or three parter, more <laughs> likely. Just saying. No, yeah. I, I mean I could get it all done in one video. I just have to get my ideas straight before I I, I just throw that because that that's one that's a labor of love for that one because it's not like something that popped into my head I can just throw out in five minutes. This is something I gotta dedicate some time to and think. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Makes sense. Well. Let me ask you this before we get out of here. How do, how how many you think they can go with with Project Cross on? I think they they could if if they keep perpetuating it and, and add more people into it and, and like more companies seven or eight games out of this. Total. That's true. Okay, I can see that. Cuz it probably want to be like the Smash Brothers of like <laughs> Smash Brothers of RPGs. Yeah, of RPGs. Yeah. Where you just like get like random cause let's be honest, Smash Brothers now everybody wanna get their third party character in. No. But but this would be a good way to do something similar. Yeah. And it could it could be good advertising. It could also be a good way to revive older characters and bring them back and, and like even bring back older games. Yeah, because a lot of these characters some of these characters like games I've heard of but I never got to play because they were only <clears throat> available in Japan. Or, or if they did come over, it was at a time where I was just like, "Dude, I ain't. I, there's too much stuff I already got." <laughs> so, you know, so, yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of characters in these games. In both of these, across both of these games, there are a lot of characters in there. Yeah, they are. They and and the games aren't like they're not like bite sized games. They're actually long games. They're not quick, over fast, and in a hurry. I mean, it's gonna take a while. To get through them, not that not saying it's hard, but just because of how much story they have in it, and how many every, every character gets their moment to shine. Literally. Yeah, they do. So <laughs> that's what usually takes up the time, takes up most of the time, because every every character they spend enough time with every character that's playable, so you can, you know, see what they can do, and up, upgrade them properly, and set the team up like you wanted, all that good stuff. So. I mean, here's hoping that they get um they, they do well enough to to do more games. Hopefully in the future, maybe they'll be able to bring it to a home console, hopefully. I mean, I would love to see it in H D personally. Um, because I it the game's just too fun to, to not you know, to have it where, you know, locked into to a handheld in my opinion. I mean, I, I see it. I see it positive to have it on the handheld, but yeah, I also would like to see it on home console as well. Yeah. For for I the mean, people who don't want to pit, purchase a handheld to be able to play it, yeah, I, I want them to have an option. Because if you you don't want to put, buy a handheld just to play one game on it, I I, I can understand that. Yeah, I I, I, I understand that as well. And, and but and the people who won't get the handheld anyway, you can carry it around with you and have you some laughs no matter where you go. So. <laughs> And plus, I, I'm just I, I just think it's a hilarious game. So I, I want as many people to play it as possible. So and and I think it worked. I, I I knew about you know the whole um Namco um the, the original one. I, Cause you, you see the openings on like YouTube and Vimeo all the time. Yeah. People go back and, and pull them back up. And I would love to have played it, but you know, didn't never got a chance to. So you know, like I said there's a there's that partially translated fan hack out there if you ever want to find it. Yeah, so that that would I would, but I'm probably not going to because to to me at this point it's just not worth it. I'll just stick to what I got. But <laughs> you know, um, that being said, here's hoping they have much success and um, hoping that maybe someday they probably do say, you know what, let's try this. Uh, home console thing again and throw some HD on it. So 
All right, that is that will do it for this last Let's Talk of 2016. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we will, like I said before, the games at large will be back on um, that second Sunday in uh, January. I think it's the ninth. I think it is. We'll be back then. And um, I think that's the seventh because the, the Switch presentation is on the Thursday, right? Yeah, it's on the Thursday. So yeah, so you're right. So it, it well. Either we'll way, the second Sunday in the, <laughs> in uh, January. So uh, we'll be back then. Format maybe we may be making some changes to the format. Um, of course, I will I'll, I will do a vid to let you guys know of any uh, format changes that we have. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you guys in 2017. Have a good one, peeps. Peace out. Go play Project Cross Zone Two now.